On July the 29th of 2023, Brazilian rancher Garon Maia and his son Francisco were flying in the former's twin-engine Beechcraft Baron 58 private plane. Roughly eight minutes after takeoff, the plane crashed into a forest located between the states of Rondonia and Mato Grosso. Garon and Francisco lost their lives in the accident. In the incident's aftermath, Brazilian authorities began examining a social media video which showed 42-year-old Garon drinking beer mid-flight. When he panned the camera, Garon showed that his son was piloting the plane. It wasn't made immediately clear if the clip had been posted leading up to the fatal plunge or during a separate flight. Nevertheless, some of the users reacting to it were critical of the apparent carelessness that Garon had displayed. The deaths had a devastating impact on Anna Pridonic, Garon's wife and Francisco's stepmother. On August the 1st, after their funerals, Pridonic was found dead in her home from a gunshot wound. Number 16. Lake Tahoe 2021 Crash In late July of 2021, a bombardier CL-600 twin-engine private jet set off from Coeur d'Alene in Idaho towards Truckee Tahoe Airport in Northern California. While approaching its destination, the plane went into an aerodynamic stall before plunging into a forest only a few blocks from the runway. The plane broke apart on impact and exploded, triggering a wildfire that was contained by emergency crews before it could reach inhabited areas. None of its crew and passengers survived. The dead were identified as pilots Thomas Ebor, 56, and Alberto Montero Di Colado de la Rosa, aged 43. Along with the real estate agent Kevin Vnarlov, property developer John Kenneth Dunn and married couple Ryan and Christine Thomas both in their 30s. A report released in the summer of 2023 by the National Transportation Safety Board indicated that the crash had occurred due to a combination of errors made by both pilots. Ebor made a mistaken steep left turn while approaching the runway, which De La Rosa failed to correct. They were cleared to land on one of the airport's two perpendicular runways and calculated they needed to use the longer one because of the jet's weight. Instead of approaching it straight on, they continued heading towards the shorter runway, then circled around and unnecessarily made a sharp turn to line up with the longer one. Additionally, they were flying too high and too fast while Ebor also improperly deployed the flight spoilers which were hinged surfaces on the wings that are used to slow down or descend. Number 15. Piaggio P-180 Avanti Costa Rica Crash German fitness mogul Rainier Schaller took off in a private Piaggio P-180 jet from Palenque, Mexico in October of 2022. Joined by girlfriend Christine Sierkowski, the two children and the personal trainer identified as Marcus Kurek. Schala was the millionaire founder of the RSG Group, formerly known as McFit, a company which acquired Gold's Gym in August of 2020, a gym known as the Mecca of Bodybuilding, which was made famous worldwide by Arnold Schwarzenegger. At around 8 p.m. on October the 21st of 2022, the plane carrying the millionaire and his family was flying over the Paris Mina area in the Costa Rican Caribbean when it lost contact with Juan Santa Maria International Airport in Costa Rica. The aircraft disappeared roughly 2 hours and 41 minutes into the flight. It subsequently emerged that it had crashed in the Caribbean and pieces of the twin-engine turboprop aircraft were found the following day. Everyone on board, including the private jet's 66-year-old pilot, was presumed dead. Rescue teams recovered two bodies in the aftermath and, on November the 4th, they were identified as being Shala and his son. The weather was initially reported as a non-factor and the cause of the crash remained shrouded in mystery. In the incident's wake, a haunting final photo that the family had taken together started circulating in the media. Number 14. Flo La Movie Incident Puerto Rican music producer Jose Hangel Hernandez, professionally known as Flo La Movie, was behind massive hits such as Neo Garcia's La Gibita and the eight times diamond certified Tebote, which featured on its remix artists such as Bad Bunny and Nicky Jam. On December the 15th of 2021, 
Hernandez was heading to Orlando, Florida after taking off from the Dominican Republic in a private plane. Among the seven passengers on board the Gulfstream 4 chartered by the 36-year-old producer was his partner of seven years, Debbie Von Marie Jimenez Garcia, their son and Hernandez's teenage stepson, Yasil Yabdiel Silva. Minutes after taking off, the pilot radioed that he needed to make an emergency landing near Las Americas International Airport. The plane was reported to have struck a tree during the landing attempt and then crashed into the ground, bursting into flames. Social media videos subsequently showed emergency rescue teams charging into plumes of black smoke. As they scrambled to put out the blaze, the seven passengers and two crew members perished in the crash. In the incident's wake, tributes for the producer poured in from artists like J Balvin who wrote, Thanks for your good vibes always, and Don Omar who ended his message with, Fly high, see you later. The preliminary findings of the investigation that followed indicated that the plane had experienced a malfunction with the spoilers on its right wing. Number 13. Georgetown Plane Crash at the end of its 120-mile journey from Fredericksburg to Georgetown, Texas, on July the 23rd of 2023, a single-engine Beechcraft BE-35 started experiencing engine failure and dramatically lost altitude. It was piloted by a man who reportedly had two decades of experience flying. The passengers were his wife and 30-year-old Lauren Perales, and the trio had reportedly flown to Fredericksburg to have breakfast had gone on similar trips many times in the past, according to Perales' mother, Monica Steenson. The plane failed to regain altitude and crashed upside down into the roof of a duplex on Northwood Drive, close to the Georgetown Executive Airport. The plane broke apart after hitting the building, which was unoccupied. Speaking of the state of confusion in which her daughter found herself in the immediate aftermath, Steenson later told a media outlet she was disoriented but found a way out. She kind of fell through the roof a little bit, but was able to catch herself and find a way down. Photos from the scene would show rescuers from the Georgetown Fire Department as they were in the midst of dealing with the accident. Remarkably, Perales, the pilot, and his wife emerged from the crash only with minor injuries and were released from a hospital later in the day. Steenson subsequently punctuated that even though the aircraft's occupants had suffered cuts and bruises, they were good considering they hit a roof at 100 miles per hour. Number 12. Incident in Piracicaba In mid-September of 2021, a twin-engine B200GT King Air took off from the Pedro Morganti Municipal Airport in Piracicaba, Sao Paulo, Brazil. Within 15 seconds, the private plane plummeted into a eucalyptus farm close to the Sao Paulo State Faculty of Technology. It erupted into a ball of flame after striking eucalyptus trees on its way down. Surveillance clips later picked up by domestic and international media outlets captured the moment that the twin-engine plane overturned and exploded. 39-year-old pilot Celso Elias Carloni and his co-pilot Giovanni Dedini Gulo, aged 24, were killed along with the family of five that were passengers, Celso Silveria Melon Pijo and his wife, Maria Luiza Menengel. Both in their 70s were identified as the victims, alongside their three adult children. National media outlet G1 reported that the family was going to spend the week at a farm they owned in the Paras city of Redonciao. Fio was the president of CSM Agropecuriara and also a shareholder of Cosan SA, a Brazilian energy giant of which his billionaire brother was the chairman. The plane's airworthiness verification certificate was valid and the cause of the accident was still being examined by Brazil's Center for Investigation and Prevention of Aeronautical Accidents as of the latest updates. Number 11. Montebello Crash At approximately 1.15 on June the 21st of 2023, a privately owned Cessna 560 Citation 5 with a pilot and two passengers on board left Elizabethton, Tennessee with a course set for New York's Long Island MacArthur Airport. Roughly 15 minutes after takeoff, 
The air traffic control operator instructed the pilot to maintain an altitude of 31,000 feet, but the plane kept climbing, reaching 34,000 feet. It continued on its course for MacArthur Airport, but upon reaching Long Island, the plane didn't commence its descent. Instead, it made a 180-degree turn and headed towards Virginia, eventually reaching restricted airspace over Washington, D.C. The U.S. Capitol complex was placed on alert and multiple F-16 fighter jets were dispatched. To intercept what was designated as a ghost plane, the jets were authorized to fly at supersonic speed and the sonic booms caused by them breaking the sound barrier were heard across the Capitol and neighboring communities in Maryland and Virginia. The fighter pilots made visual contact with the Cessna's pilot, who was reported as passed out behind the controls and tried using flares to get his attention, but it was to no avail. Minutes later, the Cessna entered a chaotic, sharp descent at roughly 20,000 feet per minute and crashed on the north face of the Mine Bank Mountain near Montebello, Virginia. It caused a crater after impacting the forested area nose first at a nearly vertical angle. It disintegrated in the heavily wooded mountainous area. A first responder who trekked through the treacherous terrain to reach the impact crater at an elevation of around 2,760 feet noted of the debris, there was nothing really bigger than your arm, while a final report on the incident was estimated to take from one to two years. Preliminary findings suggested that the occupants had gone to sleep and never woke up after experiencing hypoxia from loss of cabin pressure. The aircraft was registered N611VG to the Florida-based Encore Motors of Melbourne, owned by John and Barbara Rumpel. John confirmed that his daughter, Adina Azarian, had been a passenger on the Dune flight along with her daughter and a nanny. Number 10. Rocky Marciano Incident Frequently ranked among the greatest heavyweight boxers of all time, Rocco Francis Marchigiano, better known as Rocky Marciano, became a champion through his relentlessness and durability before retiring with an undefeated record of 49 wins and zero losses. In spite of his small frame, Marciano was the only heavyweight to go undefeated throughout his professional career and also had the highest career knockout percentage of any heavyweight champion. Roughly 13 years after he retired, on the evening of August the 31st of 1969, Marciano was a passenger on a private Cessna 172 heading to Des Moines, Iowa from Chicago. Joining the boxing grate in the small aircraft's back seat was 28-year-old Frankie Farrell, the oldest son of Iowa mob boss Lou Farrell, himself a former boxer. On September the 1st, Marciano would have turned 46 and there was a surprise birthday celebration waiting for him at his destination. At the time a storm system was building in the region, the Cessna was piloted by 37-year-old Glenn Belts, who had only 231 total hours of flying time and was inexperienced with flying in bad weather and night flying. To avoid the storm, Belts made the decision to land on a small airfield in Newton. The plane was also low on fuel at the time. Belts continued visual flight that exceeded his experience level and entered low clouds while approaching the runway. As the National Transportation Safety Board later concluded, the pilot experienced spatial disorientation in the last moments of flight. The plane hit a lone oak tree in a cornfield roughly two miles short of the runway. Belts, Marciano and Farrell were killed on impact. Number 9. Elmina Plane 2023 Crash A Beechcraft 390 Premier One business jet carrying two pilots and six passengers was on an internal flight from Langkawi International Airport to Sultan Abdulaziz Shah Airport in Malaysia on August 17, 2023. Shortly before 3 p.m., the aircraft made contact with the air traffic control of its destination airport and was cleared for landing. Less than three minutes later, the ATC sighted smoke along its flight path. Eyewitnesses later reported that the plane was moving erratically as it plummeted towards an expressway interchange near El Mina. The plane struck the road wing first at high speed, followed quickly by its nose. The impact tore it apart and the wreck became a fireball, which momentum carried forward on the roadway and onto a grass verge. The main debris was found about 240 feet from the impact zone while the body of someone who had been on board was launched 
330 feet away. The pilots and passengers all died in the crash, which also claimed the lives of a passing motorist and motorcyclist. Families of the victims had to submit DNA for identification purposes after five bags of body parts were recovered from the crash site. Only one body from the 10 people who perished in the crash was reportedly recovered intact. Jahari Harun, a state assemblyman in charge of housing and the environment in central Pahang state, was confirmed to have been among the plane passengers. Footage of the crash was captured on dash cams by passing motorists and on surveillance video, which the authorities examined during their investigation into the crash. The results were still pending as of the latest information available on the matter. A preliminary report indicated that the plane was well maintained and airworthy, the pilots were certified, and there was no evidence that incapacitation or physiological factors had impacted their behavior. Number 8. The Day the Music Died In 1971, American singer-songwriter Don McLean released his chart-topping American Pie anthem, which was inspired by the 1959 plane crash that claimed the lives of rock and roll icons Richie Valens, Buddy Holly, and the big bopper J.P. Richardson. A line from McLean's song would become a cultural reference for the tragedy, which would henceforth be known as the day the music died. In the winter of 1959, Holly was touring the U.S.'s Midwest with his band, consisted of Waylon Jennings, who'd go on to become a pioneer of the outlaw country genre, as well as Tommy Allsup and Carl Bunch. Joining Holly on the tour were Dion and the Belmonts, as well as rising artists Valens and Richardson. Holly and his band were meant to perform in Moorhead, Minnesota, and a plane was chartered for the musicians to take them to Fargo, North Dakota, with Hector Airport being the closest to their destination. The 1947 single-engine V-tailed Beechcraft 35 Bonanza that would carry the musicians was piloted by 21-year-old Roger Peterson. There have been multiple versions of events of how Valens, Holly, and Richardson had come to be on the plane together. The consensus was that the latter had contracted the flu during the tour and asked Jennings for his place on the plane. Upon learning that Jennings wasn't going to fly with him, Holly was said to have jokingly told him, well, I hope your damned bus freezes up, to which Jennings replied, well, I hope your old plane crashes. The latter remark would reportedly haunt the country singer for the rest of his life. Valens, who'd previously had a fear of flying, got Allsup's seat on the plane following a coin toss, reportedly saying that it was the first time in his life he'd won anything. As the small plane took off from Mason City Municipal Airport on February the 3rd, there was light snow, six miles of visibility and winds of up to 30 miles per hour. Peterson reportedly hadn't received updated information about worsening weather on the planned route. He'd accumulated over 700 flying hours, but was reportedly not yet qualified to operate in weather that required flying solely by reference to flight instruments. The plane went up at 12.55 a.m. and at around 1 a.m. Peterson failed to make the expected radio check. Hubert Jerry Dwyer, owner of the flying service operating the plane, had watched from a platform outside the control tower as the plane took off, turned 180 degrees to pass east of the airport and climbed to about 800 feet. Dwyer then saw the tail light gradually descend until it disappeared from sight. The plane crashed into the ground roughly six miles northwest of the airport at around 170 miles per hour. The right wing impacted first and broke apart before the fuselage followed suit. The plane bounced off the ground and flew for another 50 feet rolling inverted and still gaining lift from its intact left wing. As it impacted the ground again, it became a mangled ball that rolled nose over tail 540 feet across a frozen field before stopping against a wire fence. The musicians were thrown from the fuselage while Peterson was found entangled in the cockpit. All four of them had died instantly from devastating brain injuries. The Civil Aeronautics Board concluded that the probable cause of the accident was the pilot's unwise decision to try and fly even though the situation at the time required skills he didn't possess. Number 7. Sam Heslop While joining her boyfriend on his catamaran on the night of March the 7th of 2021, Sam Heslop from Britain disappeared. 
moored off the coast of the US Virgin Islands, the couple had been seen enjoying dinner in St. John's before returning to the 47-foot yacht. At around 2.30 a.m. that night, police received a call from her boyfriend, Ryan Bain, who reported he'd woken up to find her missing. He was advised to contact the US Coast Guard, which he did, but only about nine hours later. Other than contacting a personal attorney, questions were raised as to what he did during the prolonged period, but Bain refused detectives' inquiries, as well as entry onto his boat. Blocked from that vein of information, investigators conducted an extensive underwater search of the coast, which lasted for days but yielded no results. Despite charging Bain with obstruction of justice, the only statement he made was to suggest she'd fallen off the boat, a theory family and friends of Heslop found very difficult to accept. Anchored close to the coast, the luxury yacht was in shallow waters, and even with perfect visibility, no trace of a body was found. Other concerning details continued to emerge as the investigation went on. Previously convicted on charges of domestic violence, Bain's ex-wife came forward to describe him as quick to anger, narcissistic, and aggressive with girls. Publicizing her darkest days, she hoped to help the investigation in any way she could. Unfortunately, even with a report from someone saying they'd heard a woman scream while out walking their dogs on the night, no concrete evidence could place her on the boat. After months of investigations, Bain disappeared from the area without any trace. Authorities publicly appealed for him to return and help, but he remained out of their sights and grasp. Number 6. Sinead McNamara 20-year-old Instagram influencer Sinead McNamara had been working on a luxury super yacht touring the Isles of Greece in 2018 when she was found hanging from the boat, unresponsive. Having sold all her belongings to travel, McNamara had been part of the vessel's staff since May and was working her last shift before reuniting with her mother and sister to continue traveling. Hours away from the reunion, she was discovered by a passing boat tangled in rope off the back of the yacht. She was still alive and given CPR, but died while being airlifted to the hospital. Already en route from Australia to meet McNamara, her mother and sister found out about her passing mid-air on their flight to Greece. With no signs of struggle or physical abuse, a Greek coroner ruled the cause of her death as hanging, but admitted the case wasn't clear-cut. On the night in question, the boat was only manned by staff after its owner, Mexico's second richest man, billionaire Alberto Baeris, had disembarked days prior. Despite insisting she was happy during their regular talks, Sinead's mother reported she'd called the day before, crying about having fallen out with another crew member. Greek Coast Guards investigating the death questioned the staff but ultimately allowed the super yacht to sail away. CCTV footage displaying the moments before McNamara's discovery was allegedly seized, but the video was never shared publicly or with the case's ruling coroner. The particularities of what had happened to her that night have remained a mystery. Number 5. Thomas and Jackie Hawks A retired couple from Prescott, Arizona, Thomas and Jackie Hawks lived full-time on their 55-foot yacht, well-deserved, for two years while they sailed around the Pacific Ocean. In 2004, motivated by the upcoming birth of their first grandchild, they decided to move back on land and sell their yacht. Their newspaper ad was answered by Skylar De Leon, who presented himself as a serious buyer and family man, gaining their trust by bringing along his pregnant wife and young daughter. The former child star and Power Ranger convinced the older couple to take him, his family, and two male friends out on a test cruise before finalizing the sale. As soon as they got out to sea, the group, led by De Leon, overpowered the couple, handcuffed them to an anchor, and threw them overboard. Neither was ever seen again but the boat and their car were returned to their usual spots. In the aftermath, De Leon insisted everyone had returned safely after the sale had been finalized, but his story fell through when the notary, who had signed as a witness to the sale, revealed she had been bribed. The story unraveled completely when one of his accomplices confessed in exchange for a plea deal. Along with outlining how they were killed, he detailed how De Leon first forced the Hawks to fingerprint and sign documents that gave him power of attorney and transferred the boat to his name. With the testimony, De Leon and the third male accomplice were found guilty on multiple charges in connection to the murders. They were given the death penalty, while his wife will serve multiple life sentences with no chance of parole. Number 4. Karen Barnes After dating David Trauger for just a few months, 
Karen Barnes quit her job as a restaurant manager to marry him in 2009. Following their short love affair, Karen filed for divorce just two and a half years later and to her ex's displeasure was granted their 558,000 custom-built yacht in the proceedings. She moved into the vessel full-time, unaware that it would leave her vulnerable to David's abuse. Dealing with constant harassment and stalking, Karen filed multiple police reports and a protective order against him, only to take matters into her own hands when authorities couldn't locate him. She secretly moved the yacht to St. Mary's, but was found out soon after. In the early hours of August the 13th of 2012, David, dressed in all black, approached the yacht on a small vessel and proceeded to light it on fire, destroying the yacht and everything inside. Tragically, that also included Karen and one other victim. Spotted days later by chance outside an apartment complex, David started a shootout after being confronted by the police. No officers were injured, but David was killed in the fire exchange. David's attorney came forward later in his defense, given a wildly different perspective of the events leading up to the tragedy. He claimed David and Karen's divorce was meant to be a sham to protect the yacht against David's first ex-wife, to whom he still owed a lot of money. David's attorney believed after Karen acquired the yacht and unexpectedly split instead of returning to be with David. Regardless of his true motive, David Trauger was categorically at fault for taking the lives of two people. Number 3. Jake Feldwehr On the final day of the 2019 Cannes Film Festival, British sailor Jake Feldwehr lost his life in a yacht crash. Feldwehr had just completed the basic super yacht training program and spent the previous four weeks exploring the south of France. The crash occurred at around 9 p.m. between super yachts, the Vision and the Minx, who had both been chartered by one group to celebrate the final night of the festival. Feldwehr had been in charge of pulling up the anchor of the Minx, but as he did so, the other vessel crashed into the front, killing him. According to reports on the incident, the captain of the Vision was told to do some rounds while waiting for the Minx to pick up the anchor and was blamed for showing off. The Vision had been traveling at three times the speed limit and the Minx had been stationary in a safe anchorage zone at the time of the crash. The captain was charged with involuntary manslaughter, while the customers and crew members of the vessels were said to have been traumatized after authorities left the blood-stained Minx in the harbor for weeks without cleaning it. Today's topic was requested by Brown958 and OTL Mike. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Edward Bozarth When Denise Bozarth was 24, she married 61-year-old Edward Bozarth. They were together for nine years, sharing two children, before things between them went awry in 2007. The whole family used to live together on a 36-foot cabin cruiser called Screw You 2. One day, a neighbor complained to police that they smelled a foul odor emitting from the boat. On July the 1st, when police investigated, they discovered the body of Edward Bozarth in an engine compartment wrapped in a canvas storage bag with the AC set to 60 Fahrenheit. An autopsy revealed he had died from blunt force trauma to the head and had likely been left there for a week. Denise became the primary suspect, but upon questioning, told police that she'd asked Edward for a separation and had left to join her children in Panhandle, Florida, where her parents lived. She failed the polygraph test and her story was inconsistent, but detectives couldn't prove her guilt until 2012, when she confessed. Witnesses came forward claiming that Denise would often talk about killing her husband and the different ways she would do it. Edward had come into a hefty inheritance from his mother and Denise had her eyes on it, as she would often tell friends around her. Eventually, a man living at the marina admitted he'd had an affair with Denise and claimed she'd offered him $10,000 to kill Edward, but he refused. She was convicted of his murder and sentenced to 14 years behind bars. Her excuse during the trial was simply that she'd snapped. We'll be lining up our previous release about when yachts go wrong right after number one. Stick around if you'd like to watch that one as well still. Number one, Mark Brennan. At the age of 42, British window cleaner Mark Brennan decided he wanted to sail around the world on a solo adventure. He left the UK in 2020 and successfully made it across the Atlantic. He was seen sailing his 30-foot yacht, Avrio, between Grenada and Barbados on December the 2nd. A few days later at 8 p.m. on December the 6th, 
he was seen pulling his vessel out of the marina in darkness. The boat's dinghy had broken on the transatlantic trip and the inexperienced sailor hadn't equipped the vessel with a phone or a radio. He was officially reported missing to British police on December the 21st, but it took weeks until he was found. The vessel was finally spotted by the local coast guard, drifting 71 nautical miles off the north coast of Jamaica. His naked, already decomposing body was found on board. Alongside the lack of communication devices and a dinghy, the Avrio had dirty fuel issues, which likely caused several engine problems, leaving it and Brennan to drift helplessly. Number 8. Oxford, USA, 2019. Aspiring pilot Elizabeth Lake Little was logging a solo flight in her home state of Mississippi from Golden Triangle Regional Airport to University Oxford Airport in July of 2019. She was practicing touch-and-go landing for her license. Over an hour had passed without incident, until the final moments when she was forced to abort the landing after approaching from the wrong direction. Evident panic streamed from her voice as she radioed with the control tower, but there was nothing they could do as her plane took a nosedive into a neighboring golf course. Preliminary reports weren't clear as to what had caused the crash, but flight instructor Robert Katz believed it could have been avoided and blamed poor training. Little was trying to land the Cessna 172 with a tailwind, while experienced pilots of small aircrafts know to go against the wind to control speed. In addition, the wing flaps, used during landing and takeoff to supply lift, were retracted, potentially explaining the plane's sudden and fatal downward trajectory. She survived the initial crash, but suffered severe burns and succumbed to her injuries later that day. Number 7. Channel of Alderney 2019. In January of 2019, Emiliano Sala, a professional soccer player from Argentina, signed a new contract to play for Cardiff City from Nantes FC with a club record transfer fee of an estimated £15 million. Two days after signing on January the 21st, he boarded a plane to make his move official, never to be seen alive again. The Piper PA-46 Malibu plane went off the radar just north of the island of Guernsey, UK, and wasn't relocated for another 13 days. It was eventually found at a depth of 220 feet in the English Channel of Alderney. Salah's body was still amongst the wreckage, while David Ibbotson's, the pilot, was never found. Salah himself had identified potential red flags. Before takeoff, he sent a voice message to a friend saying, I am now on board a plane that seems like it is falling to pieces. If you do not have any more news in an hour and a half, I don't know if they need to send someone to find me. I am getting scared. The plane then crashed after breaking apart mid-flight. It was later revealed that the pilot was crucially underqualified and inexperienced to fly the aircraft, especially at night and in poor conditions. A faulty exhaust pipe might have caused carbon monoxide poisoning in both occupants, but ultimately the aircraft fell apart due to flying at a speed significantly faster than designed to. In June of that same year, a man was arrested on suspicion of manslaughter in connection to the crash, but was released with no further action. In the aftermath, Cardiff FC and Nantes FC reportedly argued over Salah's transfer fee. Number 6. Martha's Vineyard, USA, 1999 John F. Kennedy Jr. was taking his wife Carolyn and his sister-in-law Lauren Bassett from Fairfield, New Jersey to Hyannis Port, Massachusetts on July the 16th of 1999 for his nephew's wedding, flying in his Piper Saratoga aircraft they followed the coastline intending to drop Lauren off at Martha's Vineyard. However, after checking in with air traffic control earlier, they failed to show up. The US Coast Guard started an official search and rescue at 4 a.m., hours after Kennedy's scheduled arrival. They were not optimistic, as several pieces of the plane had been seen littered across the coastline. Six days later, on the afternoon of July the 21st, the wreckage and all three bodies were found still strapped into their seats, under and around the fuselage. There were no navigational or mechanical issues discovered and the final report determined the cause to be pilot inexperience and loss of control, despite Kennedy having over 300 logged hours. Although it was a foggy and hazy night, Kennedy had turned down the offer of one of his instructors coming along to help, insisting he could manage alone. It's suspected that in conditions of low visibility, he lost sight of the horizon and became disorientated. He would have had to rely completely upon his instruments 
a skill not yet mastered. Radar showed the plane plummeting 1,100 feet in 14 seconds before disappearing. Kennedy Jr., who was known for his charming good looks and being the crown prince of one of America's most esteemed families, was mourned by many. Number 5. Abaco Islands, Bahamas, 2001 August 25th of 2001, famous Miami-born singer and actress Aaliyah boarded a twin-engine Cessna 402 aircraft destined for Florida. Three days prior, she had jetted off to the Bahamas to shoot an exclusive music video for her upcoming song, Rock the Boat. Finishing her scenes a day early, Aaliyah and an entourage of seven decided to charter a flight back to Miami before the rest of the production crew. Emotions were high as the aircraft arrived almost two hours late. Impatient to take to the sky, the aircraft was loaded and set to take off, something it would never achieve. The plane crashed just 200 feet from takeoff, killing everyone on board. Only certified to carry six passengers, the flight was taken eight, all with equipment, meaning it was doomed from the start. Shockingly overlooked, the pilot was not qualified to fly the plane, had falsified documents, and his autopsy revealed traces of cocaine and alcohol in his system. There are reports that Aaliyah had expressed concern about the safety of flying in and out of the Bahamas to her boyfriend, who'd advised her not to travel. There are also reports of overheard arguments between passengers and the pilot about weight concern, with the pilot advising not to fly and passengers pushing to continue. Aaliyah was only 22 and one of the most famous people in the world at the time. Number 4. Scottsdale, USA, 2018 On April the 9th of 2018, six people lost their lives in a ball of fiery wreckage after the single-engine Piper PA-24 Comanche plane they were in failed to maintain sufficient airspeed after takeoff. The plane belonged to student pilot James Pedroza, but it's unclear whether he was the one flying the plane as he was joined by Eric Valente, an experienced pilot and instructor. The four remaining passengers were Maria Sunshine Coogan, Anand Patel, Helena Lagos and Iris Rodriguez Garcia, who were all budding Instagram stars and models with thousands of followers each. Although confirming everything to be all good to air traffic control moments before, their flight from Phoenix to Las Vegas ended only 70 seconds after takeoff as they hurtled to the ground in Scottsdale, Arizona. Evidence of cocaine and ecstasy were found in James Pedroza's blood, but it was impossible to timestamp if it had been ingested before or during the flight. A broken spring from a cylinder valve was also discovered, but the main cause was concluded to have been the aircraft being 135 pounds overweight and off balance. Number 3. Columbus, USA, 2008 Blink-182 drummer Travis Barker and Adam DJAM Goldstein were trying to fly from Columbus, South Carolina to Los Angeles, California on September the 19th of 2008 but never made it off the ground. While speeding along the runway, one of the plane's wheels burst and the pilot was forced to abort the takeoff. With one tire out, the plane was out of control. It veered back and forth and ran off the runway into a nearby highway before finally crashing into an embankment. It burst into flames immediately and four people were killed. Barker and Goldstein were able to jump out of the emergency exit before it crashed, escaping with their lives. Travis jumped out right into a spray of jet fuel, covering himself. Running and ripping off his clothes in the middle of the highway, he finally dropped and rolled, killing the fire but not before it covered 65% of his body with third-degree burns. He spent 11 weeks in hospital and said he'd swallowed so much fuel that he was burping up jet fuel for almost three months. The mental toll was arguably as bad as the physical. Goldstein unfortunately died in an overdose just a year later and Barker was diagnosed with PTSD. He has never set foot on a plane again since. Number 2. Leon Township 2021 On January the 2nd of 2021, a small private plane carrying a family of three crashed into a house in Leon Township, a suburb of Detroit, killing all occupants. The plane crashed into the living room of the house and quickly set the whole place ablaze. Miraculously, everyone at the residence, except the family cat, survived unscathed, despite being home at the time. David Compo, the owner of the single-engine Piper PA-24, was an experienced pilot taking his family home after a visit to Georgia. They were cleared to start their descent into Willow Run Airport in Ypsilanti, 
and were assured by air traffic control that they could always land at another nearby airport if necessary. David Campo was not instrument rated in poor weather and it was the dead of winter, but he decided to give it a shot anyway. The plane descended to 1900 feet before violently spiraling to the left multiple times and crashing a half a mile from the runway. Number 1. Oahu, USA 2019 The most deadly US civil aviation accident of the last decade was a skydiving plane crash in 2019 in Hawaii, resulting in the death of 11 people. Everyone was quick to blame the pilot, Jerome Renk, who was known to be an aggressive flyer. In the past, Renk would try maneuvers far beyond his training as an extra thrill ride for customers. One of these maneuvers was to pitch at a steep angle and climb aggressively right after takeoff. In June, the Beach King Air 65 A90 aircraft was seen aggressively taken off before stalling and fatally crashing. The US National Transportation Safety Board reported that the stall and subsequent loss of control were at too low of an altitude for Rank to have recovered from, but they weren't quick to point blame. The report didn't name any single cause for the crash as investigations found other factors that had potentially contributed. For one, the skydiving company Oahu Parachute Center didn't even hold the right permits to legally take people out. George Riviera, the company owner, was granted a permit for parachute repairs and riggings back in 2010, but it was under a different company name. It was also found that the aircraft had been in a stall and spin incident in 2016, in which skydivers had to preemptively jump out. The left wing was damaged and never adequately repaired, negatively impacting its mid-air stall margin. The investigation brought to light the disappointing regulatory standards of the Federal Aviation Administration and its general unawareness of subsequent subpar training given to pilots. Thanks for watching. Would you rather have an eight seat private jet or a medium sized yacht? Let us know in the comments section below.